Hello and welcome to Diplomata. I'm Francis Sune. When Timor-Leste first got its independence, one of the biggest challenges it faced was to have its representation in other countries. Diplomatic relations was crucially important. A very courageous step this country took to overcome the challenge was to recruit young Timorese who were willing to be diplomats. So, here is the story of one of those young Timorese who dared the hardships and difficulties to represent his proud country since the early days of independence. Thank you very much for doing this interview. To start the conversation, um, would you please tell us how was your childhood? What, what was it like to be a child in um, a small boy in Timor Leste? Well, uh, you know, I was born in um, 1974. June 1974. Then I was, uh, you know, a kid, uh, young boy, uh, you know, just born in Delhi. Then, uh, you know, uh, when I grew up around 1980s, you know, Delhi was destructed because of the, uh, you know, after five years of the, the invasion, the occupation of Indonesia. And then, uh, you know, the time it was, uh, yeah, uh, hard times. But uh, I think I learned a lot from this. Uh, this, uh, this period that uh, you know, uh, within friends, you know, uh, we have to helping our our parents. You know? Sometimes we have to. You no, know, I'm also, uh, you know, uh, you no. Know, as you know, the Timorese that uh, always have a small, uh, uh, what you call that. Uh, uh, you know, you have some amount of, uh, of a pork, a pig. Then you have to raise it, and then later on, then you will sell for uh, you know uh, paying your school school fee tell us about your school how was how was how was it studying in in, in Delhi at the moment at the time when you were boy? yeah when i was i was the uh, study at the you know primary school the one that uh, in farol uh, used to call that uh, sd2 uh, farol uh, you know, it's, uh, it's what's uh, close to, uh, I, I think, in, in uh, Farol, that's uh, near to, now is, uh, uh, this time is uh, uh, the, the official residence of the, our dignitary, like president, current president, and then also um, prime minister. So, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, during the time when I studied there, you know, all this area is uh, occupied at all, uh, military official. So once you go into the school, then you see around that there's a military official around that school. It must be quite um, scary um, studying in an area heavily surrounded by military personnel. Um, can you tell us how, how did, did it feel studying in that area as a, as a young boy? Um, a young boy who started to support independent, the movement for independence at the time. You know, the time I was uh, starting a grade school uh, when I was uh, seven years old. Then, uh, then after that, uh, when I came to uh, grade three, then uh, there, there was a subject that uh, about history, but actually that history of Indonesian. Then uh, my teacher at the time told us about the history of of Timor as well. Then the time is the the, the 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 subject is about integration. Then is that mention about the the, the party that uh, you know when it started in 1975, like Fretling, like Apodete, like UDT. And then also the teacher was uh, explaining about the, all those party uh, platform. Let's say they say oh Fretling was uh, for independent and this one from uh, blah blah blah. Then I was uh, I was uh, you know come to my mind and why not. What is independence? Independence is mean that we have your own flag, and it means that uh, you have uh, you have to you know control your own country. Then at the time, but when you have the this um, this thinking in your your mind, then you also scary that you just uh, the, told to the you know your your friend next uh, next to you. Then uh, starting the the time, then, then um, some of my friends that we're starting uh, you know discussing about this and then uh, uh, some of my uh, friends they also the father was also involved 
in the struggle since the beginning. Then we share in the story. Oh, my father also told me when after the dinner, then he, he was uh, telling me about the, the, the hard time when uh, struggle, you know, the food against the Indonesia in the border. Because some of, uh, of my, uh, my friends uh, in the class, they also uh, have a father, he's a, a former Portuguese army. Then include my, my father as well, uh, the, the time is Portuguese uh, soldier. And then when uh, Fredlin came, then they decided to afflict it to Fredlin. How about your teenage years uh, when you finished from your primary school? Uh, where did you go and how was the continuation of the pro-independent stories that you have just talked about? Yeah. Before I graduate my grade school, because you know in Indonesian time is a grade school is a, uh, until the sixth grade, right? On the fifth grade, then uh, I was, um, uh, you know, uh, telling my some of my elder brothers, some relatives that in the in my uh, village that we call Colmera. Then uh, they also some of my uh, uh, of my uh, you know uh, be, uh, they are uh, elder than me, and then the, they show me about our flag. Oh, this is our flag. Our flag is must be beautiful than uh, Indonesian. Uh, and then also they're telling we have more color than Indonesian. <laughs> so that's that's. Then we uh, start in conversation. Then one times that uh, before I graduate the, the grade school, so I was uh, 14 years old. Then we established a group, about 20 of us. That we established a, a small group that we call Repollo in the uh, in Colmera. Then we are starting to find uh, the, the connection with the Valentine in the jungle. And then, starting from then, uh, you know, we, we're trying to, to make a small structures. And then, uh, that I was also already um, speak a broken English at the times. Then uh, they, uh, they give me, uh, you know, my, uh, my, my, my role in the small structure that I was uh, responsible for the in, uh, external uh, relations. Uh, and then they said, okay, your duty is have to contact with any foreigners who, who visit Timor. That is such a young age, starting to be involved in the struggle when you were you are 14 years old. How was the risk, how was the danger doing that um, Yes, of course, it's a very, uh, very um, uh, dangerous. I think uh, because we are at the time, you know, as I told you in the beginning, that uh, Delhi was, uh, you know, under uh, the under the surveillance because we are surrounded by the, all the military personnel, everything. But uh, I have my own strategy how to contact the. You know, when I approach any foreigners, I have some strategy uh, that I learn from the a book. Uh, that I borrow from my, my brother, he, he was passed away already, his name is Antonio de Silva. And he got, at the time, he, he, has a, he had a, a book uh, called uh, about the uh, Mossad, that's intelligent. Then I read the book, the book in, in, in Bahasa. Then I, I, I borrowed the book from, from him, then I, I read about the intelligent activi activity, the country intelligent activity. Then I learned from uh, Eli Cohen, the, the, the figure in the book, uh, you know, he was very famous. I think one of the the, the espionaging of um, Israel very, very famous. When uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I learned from that. I try to use how to contact. I have to uh, from the from the book that I read. Then a reference to me. Then how to establish myself to to do my uh, my you know, my activity. Then I have to sell. Uh, so I I found some of my friends who you know, uh, selling newspaper. At the time, we just sell two newspaper, uh, uh, one uh, Indo Indonesian newspaper called Compass in Bahasa, and another one is Jakarta Post in English. Then I picked up the Jakarta Post, then I used this, uh, the newspaper, then I have to traveling around the, all the hotel in Dili, in Dili like uh, Hotel de Mahkota, and then Hotel Resende, and Hotel Turismo. So, when uh, the, any foreigners that we found that they are in a the hotel, then we, I went there, then I approached and then, oh, he, uh, selling the, 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 the newspaper to him. Uh, and, then I, and then I found out that uh, Indonesian intelligence, that they call SGI, that mostly all capacitors, 
they always uh, you know uh, uh, always spy on us, always uh, um, uh, look at us. But uh, when they when they approach, then I have to tell him you know uh, in the conversation I have to change. So we are talking everything good about Indonesia. When he when I I, I, I identify that he or she not around, then I I'll, I'll talk about our struggle that we are. Uh, invaded, we are now, we are uh, continue to struggle for independence. Uh, that I got a story from my father that we are being invaded. My father also one of the volunteer members. So I'm telling all the history that about the resistance. Then uh, our, uh, our, um, our volunteer you know, still in the jungle. So we are now here that uh, yeah, we, we, of course, that we are uh, request the international support, international solidarity, for all this. Tell us, do you have any story, any memory of meeting foreigners in Timor, in Dili, at the time that you'd not forget? Something that has always been stuck in your mind, um, an experience that you have. Yes, uh, in, uh, I think in 1992, after massacre, Santa Cruz, then I have, a, you know, we have a, a friend from uh, U.S. Uh, from uh, USA of America. His name is Mr. Uh, Joseph Nevins. He was a he was a uh, academician because he, he wrote uh, his uh, he was a, a professor at the Columbia University in New York. Then one time he because he wrote uh, a book about uh, Southeast Asia. Then also he was include uh, Timor also become uh, his uh, his focus. So he. He, 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 he went here. Then, uh, you know, I met, I met him in the, uh, at, the, at the motel church one morning. Then, uh, because at the time I was also uh, a college, you know, the a college who always helping uh, our priests, and, you know, because all my grade age, I was uh, uh, always in the, uh, every afternoon or every morning, I went to the church and helping, uh, helping, our, uh, helping uh, the priest to, uh, to, ser uh, to perform the mass. So one time I went there, then I was on the altar together with uh, our uh, former uh, bishop, at the time still priest, uh, Bishop Ricardo. And then I looked down and I saw, wow, one uh, guy sitting on the seat at the back. Then I say, oh, in my heart I say, after the mass, then I will contact him. So as soon as after we finished the mass, then we went to the changing room. Then I went out. Then uh, Mr. Joseph Nevin, uh, he, he was the one who uh, spoke to me. Uh, you know, ah, are you from the uh, clandestine network? Then I was, I was, you no, know, I was uh, surprised. I said, yes. What can I do for you? Okay, if you want, we can talk. Then I, I took him to, to uh, the, 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 I mean the, the Bolly room, you know, the Salon Parochial. It was at the back of the chairs. Then we started to, to know each other. Then uh, he, he was introduced himself that he, if he was from uh, US and then his visit here, he want to cover the history of, uh, of Timor. Uh, he know that we still, uh, we are a struggle. And then he was also know about the, the, the massacre is just, uh, just, just uh, recently because the time is 1992. So it's, it's just about one year uh, later. Uh, then, then I asked him, where you stay? Where do you stay right now? Oh, I'm staying in tourism. Then I told him, oh, yeah, tourism is very dangerous because it's always all the intelligent, the Indonesian Asian is always around there, to, uh, particularly if, they, if there, is, uh, there was any foreigner there, then it will be, become a, a focus. So I told him, okay, if you want me uh, to, to bring you uh, some uh, document from the resistance, I will organize for you, but I suggest you to, to move to, to a small hotel. Then you have to make yourself, it's like, uh, you know, um, uh, nowadays uh, people call the, um, uh, the, the tourist that, uh, what they call the tourist, um, it's just come uh, simple backpackers. Uh, backpackers. Yeah. You, you cannot make yourself like uh, some executive like this, it's, uh, it's very dangerous to approach you. So I told him to move to one small lossman that near to uh, uh, campus, University of uh, Timor. 
that what called uh, at, the, uh, at the time it, it was named the uh, Los Membas Mary and Tunas Mekar. That is the bus, the bus station actually, because that's the bus uh, Dili Kupang uh, every day. So I suggest him, then I contact with uh, our resistance friends, networking. Then at that time as well, so one of my uncle, uh, his name Paulino Montero. Uh, he's uh, he's, uh, he's uh, resistant, then he always call uh, Mo Mobili. He, he was the one who, uh, I think you saw already the picture in your program, that uh, one report that uh, he met uh, Mombo Sanana one time in, in, in Hermera. So uh, he was, actually he was in hunting, because uh, uh, after the Santa Cruz, then he was moving around house to house. Then one time he came to my house, and then, uh, and then I, I have to put him in my, my room, no? my bedroom. I say, okay, you here, it's okay. Colmera is everybody here, is our uh, uh, also uh, our resistance uh, group. So you will be feel safe here. So he stay in the room. Then I, I move already the Joseph Nevin from Turismo to Los Membas Mary and Tunas Maker, Tunas Maker. Then in the early morning, then uh, Paulino Montero, Mobili was king. Uh, so yeah, I just met one of our great friends from America, but he asked, he asked me to, to give some document. I don't know where I can get the document. So if you, if you can uh, contact with uh, anybody, then can bring this document. So you just go and get any document. Just bring here, then uh, later I think tomorrow I'll, I'll give to him. So. One of also our friend, I forgot uh, his name, is a taxi driver. He's the one who I, I advise him. Uh, meet uh, meet uh, Joseph in Hotel Tourism. Then I advise uh, Mr. Joseph, you have to stand uh, in front of the Hotel Tourism. Later, one taxi driver who pass, then you just follow him. Because I already advise him to move you to uh, Los Membas Mary. Then move, then uh, Mr. Paulino Montero. He went out the house early morning. Then the next day he came with a big envelope, white envelope, and then said, "This is document. Now, my because I call I call him uncle. Now I don't know how can you manage yourself and then to to deliver this document to your friend." I said, "Don't worry. I, I'll 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 do my strategy. I, I'll do. Let me handle it." So one morning, then uh, you know, editor. Because before that, a lot of grass uh, around the detail. I have one of a goat, two goats. So I have to also put the goat. Then I using the, I wearing, um, wear, um, I was wear, uh, you know, short, sandal. And then the document I carry with the, journal, the, the newspaper, Jakarta Post. So what is my strategy is when the, the intelligence approach that, no, I came to him because he need to deliver the newspaper. So I got, after that, I put the, the God, or what they call in Teto is Bibi, there. After that, I have to uh, move to Hotel uh, Los Membas Mary. Then I know exactly already he stay in the room number five. I still remember <laughs> the room number five. Then I went to, when I approached to um, uh, uh, his door, then I knock, Joseph, Joseph, it's me here. And then when he, ah, why you come early morning? Yes, this is documents ready. This is document. This is you're looking for. And then after that, he put to uh, put into his, his luggage. Then uh, he he took out one whiskey bottle, and he put in. Okay, thoughts first. I say you. We have to. You know, we 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 don't need to stay longer in the room. Why? No, no. We have to move out and move to the visitor room. But from now on, from this minute, we have to change the conversation. What? So I just follow you. Yeah, just change the conversation. We just. Uh, talking something about good about Indonesia. So we talk about development, we blame Portugal, everything, blah, blah, blah. Everything is good about the integration. Then on the corridor of the hotel, once we approach to the visitor room, just a few minutes, two Copasos intelligence came, came over. And it came over, one approached my shoulder. And then I already told uh, Joseph, don't, don't nervous, he just feel relaxed. Not, not, you know, just feel uh, as, uh, not, uh, not, nothing, so you just feel relaxed, just follow me. Then we just keeping talking about uh, uh, the development, infrastructure, all things that the Indonesian uh, government has done. 
And then the, the co-pastors is approaching me and you know, eat and talk. Hey, oh, it's good, good. You have to, you have to talk like this. Okay, you, you have done a very good job. So, and then I told, okay, Bapa, jangan khawatir. Nanti kalau ada informasi nanti saya, saya, saya sampaikan. And then after that, they left, they left us. But before that, I managed already Joseph ticket, bus ticket, and uh, airline ticket. I was also already uh, working uh, part time with Merpati agent, selling a ticket. But after I uh, finished class, then I work from uh, from about three o'clock until eight, eight eight p.m. So I am talking about the story 1992. I was already we were already together in uh, Santa Joseph. <laughs> I was already high school. Then it is. Um, I think this. Uh, I always. Uh, Remember, it's difficult. I don't know if they uh, they know what is my activity at time. I think I already I don't know. I will have a very very uh, difficult situation. Where did you learn English, and what attracted you to? What motivated you to learn English in such an early age? Yeah, actually, you know, um, I watched the movie. At the time, you know, the one time, you know, when uh, our time, we have a movie, Cowboy. But there is a translation in letter, you know, when we, and, and then also the TV is black and white. <laughs> then I was, I said, wow, the language is very interesting. Uh, then I started to find a book and uh, the dictionary. Then I tried to memorize the, the, uh, the, the words. And then also at the same time, I, uh, I have a radio. I try to open and follow the the BBC, uh, BBC News in English and then in Bahasa as well. At the same time, when when it's time to English, English, uh, English, um, English uh, session, then I I, I, I I listen to the the news. Then I study. So by myself, I try to memorize everything, and, and sometimes I talk to myself with uh, using the mirror. And then all of my friends are saying, "What what what is, what is he doing in the room?" And some say, "Oh." It's maybe crazy. You know? Say all the all suspicious. Uh, they, they, they so my behavior at a young age is uh, very strange. Uh, and uh, after that, then we when we established the the group of clandestine, we call it a very small group uh, named Repolio. Then uh, they give me a, a, a role as a responsibility for the international. Uh, they call it external external relation. And by then, then I feel that language is very important for using for our resistance. Then, then, uh, then yeah, I think I use it during the, the struggle. Then one time I say, I have to uh, tell you some story very funny. One time with my friend, uh, his name Alfredo. So, you know, when Indonesian time, yeah, we have a cis -cumbling. You know, the, the Indonesian, they say, okay, you have to, Young people or Karantaruna, you have to go to the to the post and then, and then to you know to, uh, and then you know they saw uh, one true Australian, Australian uh, two Australian tourists who passed from Colmera go to Los Angeles and come over and they say, call Siku English, call Siku English, and then they have to sell some one of my friend and uh, came to my house and say, ah, yeah, they need you because two Australian there, and then. I came out, then we we sitting together in the uh, post cam uh, post cam. So it's like a, a garden. You know? It's like a it's like a, a post uh, for security. So we sitting together there while waiting two Australian come over. Then Australian pass. Yeah, si kuliho sira, kuliho sira. And then I go. Ah, oh, yes, my friend. How are you? Are you from Australia? Yes. How can you speak English? Yes. Please, please come over here. Then I, I will practice my English and then we talk. One of my friends named Alfredo said, What it was here? No, I said, No, no, no. no. We have to find out first if they are tourists, if they are interesting with the, with the conversation, you know, if they're interested about, to know about our history. And then we also have to look around. It's already safe, no intelligence here. If you feel safe, then we will uh, you know, um, uh, invite them to keep uh, conversation. T talking about our struggle. So that is also one of the st stories, very funny in Colmena. The post is uh, right in the center of uh, Batara Indra. Now the post is missing already. <laughs> Tell us about your family. Um, how was it? Um, how was your family at the time? 
Uh, actually, uh, we are uh, seven uh, siblings. Uh, I, 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 I am the eldest, uh, the eldest son, and then I have the two, two young brothers, and then, uh, the, and then uh, three young brothers and two young sisters. Now we only uh, four, and the others uh, about uh, three is already passed away. Then you know my father was uh, from Atsabe, who we speak Kemak. And then my mother was uh, from uh, Letefo, the Ermera, so we speak Mumbai. But they came to Dili during Portuguese time. They came over here in 1950. So in 1950, then they, they established family. Then I just born in 19, 1974. Yeah. How was life at the time? Um, under, the, un, under the invasion? Life must have been really hard. How was it uh, for you, um, pr particularly? Of course, it's uh, very, very hard. And then, uh, you know, as I told you, that um, at the time we are as young, uh, young generation, young kids. Then uh, we heard, uh, you know, we are the patriotism is come, and then when you know, we, is, uh, the, the spirit to 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 struggle. I mean to to involve in this uh, process when we we get the you know the 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 message record cassette message record from Mombot Sanana was that uh, our our group also access to then one time that um, you know uh, we using tape record in a roll then we have to listen to this message by radio uh, tape record and then we have to share at least uh, two person go and listen then the others have to secure you know, uh, yeah. Then uh, I, we heard a very, very important message from Mombot Sanana, as a, our commander in chief was saying that Lo Rico Rainai, La Belle for Fatim Bangaruga. Then at the time we are asking each other, yes, now we identify ourselves as a young Timorese and we have something to do. We have to, something to do, nobody else. This is our responsibility. Uh, it was, and then bring us together, then we all involved in the struggle, and then we formed the, uh, the group that I told you, Repoyo, and later on we also joined uh, Ozetil, and then also we link it with other uh, guerrilla, uh, other uh, uh, clandestine group, and other, other village in Dili, like some of our friends from Villa Verde, Pairopite, Audian, and all of things. Then start on then uh, we involved until uh, until I went to Indonesia then after massacre Santa Cruz and all and until uh, referendum 30 August 1999 and just to finish the conversation for this session how do you keep in touch with your old friends with friends from the independence uh, struggle for independence movement how do you do you keep in touch with them yeah, we keep in touch. Uh, we always um, uh, meet each other because that uh, uh, we have uh, still have exist uh, Comité Dos de Novembro, and all of our group in uh, Repollo. About six was passed away during Massacre Santa Cruz. I would mention the name. Is uh, I always remember them: uh, Ameuticus, uh, Gustavo, uh, Adu, Mauduang. So they all pass away in the same time. They they never come back. And then also we have a group, uh, Renetil, still until now exists. I was a former, uh, former vice secretary general of Renetil after independence. The, the fourth congress in 2000, we are replacing Fernando Lassam. I was together with uh, now one of my uh, friends, uh, Mariano Asanam, and now he's, uh, I heard he's a uh, current uh, contender for the president election. And then also, um, Secretary General was um, uh, Miguel Manitelu, his former, uh, our former Secretary of State for uh, Youth and Sport. So we still, you know, when uh, the, the organization still exists, so then we still contact with uh, friends that we are together in Indonesia, and then also my, particularly my friends who in group, uh, Repoyo group, they're all member of Comité Dos November, and then also all friends in Dili, so I think if you, uh, because 
during the period of uh, childhood, they call me Siko Ingles, Maturui, so we have a, you know, a name. When I went to Java as a study and then involved in Renitil, then my name changed, become uh, Maukura. And then uh, with all my Indonesian friends, uh, they call me Dionisio and Dio. So we changed the name. <laughs> Is uh, is you know uh, to avoid from the intelligence. It has been a very interesting conversation. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much for staying with us on Diplomata. Let's start by talking about the diplomatic missions you have been involved with, um, the places you have been into. Yeah. Before I I, uh, I would like to explain. Uh, when I start, where, where, where is my first posting as uh, representing our country? Uh, before that, uh, I was uh, together with uh, the other uh, 49 uh, colleagues that uh, we were we were uh, recruited by the Yun Tayet at the time, uh, late um, Dr. Sergio Vera de Mello, and together working together with our uh, current uh, our former president, uh, Dr. Zeramos Orta, was. Uh, came initiative to prepare the, the embryo of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs at the time, under Untayat. So in 2000, uh, it was uh, 2000, uh, yeah, August 2000, then we joined, uh, uh, we having a, a diplomatic course. Then uh, Dr. Horta was uh, invited all the you know, former ambassador and very, very high, um, high um, skill or Professional in uh, in this uh, in this uh, uh, in the diplomacy, so they came over to Delhi and then giving a, a diplomatic course to us. Then, uh, starting 2000 and uh, 2000, we have a diplomatic course. Then also, uh, I was uh, get a chance that uh, sent by Dr. Horda. I went to Kuala Lumpur for having my uh, senior diplomatic training. I was together with. Uh, our now, now current ambassador, uh, our uh, current ambassador, George Camoins, now uh, Brussels in, in, in Brussels, and then also our former former uh, vice minister of foreign affairs, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Roberto Suarez. So we were together, three of us, as a first uh, group that sent to 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 attend the, the diplomatic senior diplomatic uh, course in Kuala Lumpur, KL. Then after that, then I also have another chance in, before restoration of independence. Together we are ten, uh, sent also to have a diplomatic course in uh, Madrid, Spain. Then from then, then I was uh, involved in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, in uh, March. Uh, officially, I worked with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs March 2002 before uh, restoration independence. Then. Uh, I was uh, as a DEX officer who dealing with the social affairs, economic affairs in the multilateral uh, division for seven years. And then my first post, post as a, a first secretary, I went, uh, and then also at the same time, uh, 2007 April, I went to Manila, Philippines, as a first official, first diplomat who arrived in the Philippines to establish our, uh, our embassy there. Uh, and then uh, my second post, then uh, after, because the rotation is always uh, three years, uh, three years outside, then uh, two or three years inside. So then 2013, uh, I went to Bangkok, Thailand, as a counselor. And at the same time, because at the time uh, uh, our government uh, had not yet to appoint anyone as ambassador, then I was performed as a charge affair acting uh, as of the chief of mission so uh, in our, our uh, embassy in uh, Bangkok, Thailand. Then uh, just recently uh, then I was uh, I got um, you know uh, trust no? I, I, I'd like to also in the same time here I think I would like to thank a uh, former foreign minister Dr. Denis Zubabo was also um, sent me to to Geneva as a, our counselor, as a charge affair for our diplomatic mission there, as a, a permanent mission to international uh, UN, United Nations and international organization, and then also cover Switzerland and Ice Monaco. So I was there, I just uh, 
as I just went back uh, home uh, two months ago. Philippines sounds very interesting because that's you went to start our diplomatic mission there. Tell us about um, your work in the Philippines. Um, it was, as I understand, it was a time when Timor Timor Leste was still having problems, financial problems, and other problems as well. Can you share us some stories about? This? Yeah, it was really, really. Uh, I think it's, it's a difficult time, but it's also for me is a very uh, great memory. Because you know, when as a diplomat, your first post for the for one country that become your first posting, it will be a very very excellent experience. is memorable. So when I went there, uh, I think this, the situation is like that. We are here we, in in the period of uh, presidential election because at the time that we have crisis in 2006, then uh, my foreign our foreign minister at the time, Dr. Horta, was uh, then became a prime minister. And then Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Jose Luis Guterres. Right after their campaign, then they said, now, you need to go now to Manila and to establish an embassy. So I went there, you know, at the time our allowances is very, <laughs> very low. I, I, you know, yeah. But, uh, you know, we're struggling, uh, we are struggling with the small allowance. But, uh, you know, we are from, uh, you know, our history, we are from the struggle. Uh, I mean the resistant uh, mentality. So you know, for us, is uh, you know we have to do the best we can and to continue to serve our country. So I went there, and then I I, I have no idea about the Philippines at the time, actually. But before I went there, about to, uh, one week, then I spent time to find how to know about the Philippine culture and the history of the country. Then I knew that the uh, Philippines was. Uh, before former uh, the colony of uh, Spain, so they also speak Spain half, and then mix with the the, the Filipino language. They call Tagalog, and then also they are under the United States of America about 50 years. So they are English-speaking country, and then they speak mix, and then and then because they are near to Indonesia, so I think it's uh, quite have a similarity as a Malay people. So. When I arrived there, first time, then I saw, but I'm actually not surprised because we were, uh, I was uh, studying in Indonesia. You know? I stayed in Malang and, uh, and then went to Jakarta many times, so we are familiar with the, <laughs> the, you know, the, the country. So when I arrived uh, in the Philippines, then I was surprised that, wow, what are you going to do with the Philippines? That is the come, first come to my mind. Of course, that uh, we at the time we have idea that we have to establish because we have already the objective that to join ASEAN uh, sooner or later. Then we have to open the embassy in all ASEAN capital. By the time the the Philippines is become, I think, uh, become the third country that we open embassy after before is Jakarta is the first, second is uh, Malaysia Kuala Lumpur, then. The fourth, the third is uh, the third embassy that we open is in Manila. So I went there. I think I got a privilege as a, as a Timorese diplomat who went there. Then with a very small allowance, I would say. But I, I, I'm, uh, it's no need to no need to feel like that. Uh, for us, is everything is enough. Just the most important that we represent in country and try our best to promote the country. So I went there. Then, then uh, during my time there, that I met a lot of uh, Filipino politicians, including a very close friend of mine, some senators, some congressmen. So you, you know, as a diplomat, when you are in a, in a country, you have to promote your country to all stakeholders of the Philippines to know, to know our, our country. And then, you know, uh, they're, they're, they have a similar, because they are Catholic, because they're only two majority Catholic country, you know, two majority um, Catholic country in, in Asia, in South, Southeast Asia, Philippines and us. Then it, we have a many similarity. And after uh, spend one, I think after six months like that, then I knew that a lot of uh, Timorese missionary, the, uh, Timorese uh, uh, 
boys or Timorese men, I mean uh, our, our, our fellow citizen who study in uh, a number of uh, ordon, a number of uh, uh, school, uh, a number of the seminarian, you know, like Canossian, like Don Bosco, uh, Salesians, and then others. So, and then also Jesuit. So I met also again some of my uh, fellow uh, alumni, you know, alumni of uh, San Diego. So then, um, you know, um, uh, it's it's very 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 um, uh, great experience. What has been the greatest challenge, the biggest challenge for you in your career as a diplomat uh, representing Timor Leste in a number of countries? You know, when uh, you're coming from a country that just uh, independence, and we have to think that nobody know, not everybody know about Timor. Before, uh, beside during our struggle for 24 years, that we have a people-to-people -people relation through international solidarity, we can. But that's only few of people that uh, knew about our country, not many. So the challenge is how we have to, how we can uh, change the, the perception of the country that we are posting to. Because they, maybe they knew during this uh, uh, conflict, uh, period of conflict, you know, struggle, that uh, violence, everything. Because when, you, uh, when I was in Manila, when I meet any, some, you don't need something. You meet the people who diplomat, your, uh, uh, diplomat friends or diplomat circle, or you meet ordinary Filipino. If they know, oh, Timor, is Timor, is Timor, it's still a war, and so it, you know the, the the people there, they they still in uh, their uh, their mind that we are still we still in in a uh, in a conflict uh, uh, situation, and then we have to you know as a, as a diplomat there. So what we have to do? to change and then deliver the information and, and then also uh, uh, so that we can uh, explain many things about the, the current situation, that our development. Then I have to work with the Filipino media, working with the Filipino media and I have to get to know the, a number of my friends, the Filipino journalists. So that they invited me to go to the, the TV station and explain about our country. Now we are no longer, we are a peaceful country, we are now developing country we have you know any, anything about the, our strategic plan everything so that uh, you know giving some hope so that um, we can also invite them to visit our country even they visit as a tourist or they just to come and to know our country and at the same time also the businessmen I mean the, the business community the investor if they might uh, want interest in to, to do something or investing in our country so I use uh, Filipino media a lot I have one friend uh, I think two or three friends, they are from uh, the Philippine media, so I'm using them to always using some, you know, uh, some, you know, using, uh, I mean that go to the station and then explain about our country. So we hope that the expectation is to change the perception. They are not look us in, in the past, but now they look more or less in the, the one that uh, we are on the road for our national development and, and, and to reach the uh, uh, national objective that uh, we are expecting to. Would you please also share with us some of the best memories you have as a diplomat um, in, the, in the countries, in the places you have been posted to? Uh, in the Philippines, when I was in the Philippines, uh, the most important is um, uh, when I was there, that uh, we have in the, the state visit of the president. You know, when you are dip diplomat, that uh, you are posting to. Uh, I mean, the, the one that I talked to you now is about uh, the posting for bilateral. Uh, that uh, you know, representing country, how to promote the bilateral relation between Timor Leste and Philippines. So when I was there, that is very interesting to me that uh, President Ramos Horta at the time he has a, he had a state visit. To Philippines, uh, it is very, you know, very. The, vi the visit is very uh, remarkable for strengthening our uh, relation between the two countries. Because the president at the time in Philippine president was uh, uh, Madam President Magal Pagalario. 
now I heard that she, she is now is uh, the house speaker of the Philippines right now. So, uh, and then President visit, then also a number of our high official, our, our cabinet member, the Minister of Education. Then, you know, uh, we are, after I arrived in 2007, then 2008, then we have uh, about 200 Timorese scholar, Timorese student who study about uh, 12 uh, university in the Philippines. So then we starting having the, the Timorese community is increased. And I, I was uh, because at the time the ambassador of the of Timor. The first is uh, now our current uh, minister of education, Dr. Armindo Maya, and after that. Uh, Later on, and replaced by uh, our current uh, Secretary General right now, Mr. Francisco, Ambassador Francisco Peda. He was the ambassador at the time, my chief of, uh, my, uh, my, uh, my head of mission, so ambassador. Same we were, I, I was uh, helping him how to prepare the state visit and all the, uh, all the uh, official visit by the foreign minister, of course, at the time. And then also uh, try to promote uh, more or less the uh, relation with the Philippines in, in the area of education, that by having 200 students, Timorese students, who study in the, uh, in, uh, in, the, in the Philippines, that embassy who working together with the Filipino uh, com uh, High Commissioner for, uh, high, high com commissioner for uh, Tertiary Education, that meaning university, so working together and then to allocate all the scholars to study the best university in, in the Philippines. Luckily today, they're all graduated, and only few of them is a failure, fail, but now most of them is already working in the in Timor-Leste government, some is working in private, private companies, so they are contributed a lot now for our development. And that's all in the Philippines. When I was in Thailand, it's very memorable to me that I met with the Her Royal Highness, Magapagala Royal, the royal family. And I able to approach him and talk to, spoke to him, encourage him to visit our country. As a, then yeah, he, uh, she, she had a first visit to Timor Leste. Uh, I still remember about 6 January 2014. So I arrived there in uh, 2000, August 2013, and then January 2014, I able to to uh, convey the message of our uh, president, our prime minister, and our government to encourage her to visit uh, Timor-Leste at the time. Uh, it was, is, um, uh, I think, is uh, one of the very important memory that I have in Thailand to, and then accompany, to have, a, I mean, to accompany uh, uh, Her Royal Highness, Magapagala Royal, to visit our country. And the visit is successful. Uh, came here, then he, as he also became a patronate for the for the school garden. I think now is uh, four or three school, school one school in Fatubes, uh, Hatulia Hermera, and one in Watulari, another one in uh, Akanunu, Hera, and then also when she was uh, celebrate uh, 60th anniversary, her 60th anniversary, and then. She, she was established a foundation, award, not, not foundation, so it's an award, the Maga, uh, Mahachakari Award. It's, a, it's, the, it's a award, the award is a, uh, for the best teacher in Asia, in Southeast Asia. So at the time, ASEAN Plast Timor Leste. Then uh, at the time, uh, he, she, uh, I, I, I talked with, uh, with uh, one of uh, her high officials. Then she was sending the former uh, minister, uh, late minister, uh, Surin Pichuang. Surin Pichuang is the one of the former uh, foreign minister of, uh, of Thailand. And also he was, he was, he was also uh, play a very, play very important role during 1999 to mobilize all the, peace, uh, in the peacekeeping force, except uh, Thailand and then all a number of ASEAN countries replacing Interfed. So, uh, what I have done in, uh, in Thailand is able to bring uh, Royal Highness to visit Timor-Leste and giving also, include also our teacher to become also the, the, the best 
uh, for for uh, for having uh, the uh, award Mahachakir award for the best teacher in Southeast Asia. So uh, now we have already three teachers that got the award. And secondly, I promote uh, beside the bilateral issue between uh, Timor Leste and Thailand at the time, uh, technical uh, technical uh, uh, cooperation uh, that we share with Thailand. And then also I promote the people-to-people uh, -people relation through sport, through a sport uh, and youth. Uh, because I like football, so when I uh, then I I had it after I was in Thailand in Bangkok, then I identified that Thailand football league is very one of very one of the best in Southeast Asia. Then I met with the sponsor, the main sponsor for the Thailand Thailand league. Football League, that's uh, the big company that call um, Taibef. So uh, the product is Chambir. So I met the CEO, then I met the, and then CEO uh, introduced me to his official that uh, who in charge on the sponsorship for the football or the club. Then I was together with our student there, the scholar, about 200, uh, I think about 200, more than 200 uh, Timurese students that the uh, scholar funding by our government. They were there, then I one time, uh, I, my, my first meeting with them, two days after I arrived, then I count off them, because at the time, the, uh, the day that I arrived, then they raised the issue about the visa, uh, the visa extension. Uh, some of them, the visa was uh, expired. And then, then the, the news in, the, in our country, uh, you know, in our uh, Timorese media, is our series uh, already, uh, may, uh, you know, the news is already that, or they, they will be uh, deported. So when I arrived there, then I met with our, my first secretary, our first secretary uh, of, the, of the embassy. Say, oh, the, the, the news is very crowded in Timor that the Timorese student will deport it from Thailand. But after that, I told uh, the, the, my, my colleagues, uh, Tata Pires, he was, he was the first secretary. I say, okay, please tell the student that I need to meet them now, even Sunday. I just arrived <laughs> two, days, two days ago. Then we have a meeting, then we said, uh, we solved the, the problem about visa, everything. Then I called them, okay, stand up. How many of you boys? And then oh, I count them, there are more than 20. Okay, are you playing football? Oh yeah, yes, we play football. We are, sometimes we are champion, become champions in a, in a uh, student league in our university. We are always become number one. Okay, now I need you train. We will uh, do something. You, even though you are not, yeah, it's, it's not your job is to, to come here to study. But if you still have a, a, a small uh, of your time, I want you to help the mission. So we are together to promote our uh, promote our country in Thailand through uh, football, a friendly match. So then I arrange with them. We establish our, our club. You know, it's only fair, you know, one small just just to establish for them. We can have a touring around Thailand. So we established the Crocodilo FC. Uh, Crocodilo FC. Uh, the player is all the Timor, uh, all the uh, Timorese scholar, our, all our students. Then I contact with the, the sponsorship. Uh, we have a, we visit a number of provinces in Thailand for have friend minute. You know, uh, for celebrating our national day like uh, Bito Ito November Proclamation Day, and we celebrate also uh, the, our restoration of Independence Day. So this is memorable. So we are traveling a number of provinces. Even though the, the friendly match we lost, I say no, no, can't lose. You know, uh, the most important that when you visit the, the, the places, the province, and then the, the ordinary Thailand, they will knew about our uh, about Timor Leste. So one example, then I took them to. Uh, so they have a play with the second division of the Thai league, uh, Thai, league, Thai league uh, football league. And then also I invited the, our national team when they have a, they have a, you know a, a ASEAN AFF championship in neighboring country like for instance they have in Cambodia or they have in Myanmar. Then I call uh, our football uh, federation president, uh, Mr. Francisco Calvade, say, please if you send uh, our national team uh, to to Cambodia, please don't don't forget to transit in Thailand. So before they go to play, uh, to participate the, the official uh, competition, I can arrange uh, for the friendly match. So uh, you know, uh, try out. So they send uh, Mr. Calvary send a team to, and then accompanied by our current minister Francisco Zeroni.
So we went to one province called Chang San Sao. The Chang San Sao province is the, the, the main, uh, you know, the main product in, the, in this province is uh, uh, mango, mango plantation. So we went there, so our national team played with the, the, the second, I think the, the champions in the second division of a Thai, Thai football club. So the, the club is named, the club of football is named Chang San FC. So it is like in a, if you Oikusi, you will have your <laughs> your uh, your uh, very proud uh, team. So we played, then we beat them two one, and then the the club, the president of the Chansons Club, told me, ah, you know, we always have a guess, but we only defeated them. But this time we are being defeated by your team. So please come back again. <laughs> so that uh, so what I in Thailand that I I try my best to promote our country through people-to-people -people relation, meeting with the business people. So I bring the Thai Bef. Actually, I, I, I took them here visit because they also want to, uh, you know, put a buri, also to put some factory because their, their company is uh, not only in beer, alcohol. They have alcohol, no alcohol. So I, I took them here and meet with Mambot Sanana at the time as a current, as a, at the time as a prime minister. So after that, then uh, we end up with uh, our uh, condition, political uh, situation in, in, in the country. Then they they, they, they postpone to, to come, but uh, they always have commitment to, to come to invest uh, in, 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 in Timor Leste. Tell us about Geneva, um, your mission there. Yes, yeah, Geneva, before I explain you about uh, what I have done in Geneva for representing our country to United Nations, uh, Human Rights uh, Human right Council, the, high, uh, the, the Human Rights Council, United Nations of Human Rights Council, and then also other international organizations. Most of them is a special agency. It's like WHO, World Health Organization, World Meteorological Organization, and uh, WTO, World Trade Organization, all. So in Geneva, mostly all diplomats they call this the kitchen of United Nations. So every special agency there, you know, dealing with trade, so trade diplomacy, humanitarian diplomacy, health diplomacy, and then at the same time also uh, meteorological climate diplomacy. So all is there. You know, when you a number of these areas that uh, we are we in touch to and having a, you know conversation in the, on the multilateral level. So I went there uh, because of the, our ambassador at the time was uh, terminated uh, his mission as ambassador. The ambassador, my, my colleagues, His Excellency, Ambassador uh, Marciano da Silva. Then uh, Foreign Minister uh, Dinizio Babos sent me to, to go there to, to keep the rhythm of the, you know, the mission. So the mission uh, you know, work and while waiting, uh, our government, our state, president to appoint a new uh, new ambassador. So actually I went there only for six months. It's supposed it's only for six months. Then because of the, the situation internally and then also COVID <laughs> and then COVID came, then I end up almost three years there. So what I have done there, you know, I was, uh, when I arrived, I, I think that we need to, uh, we need to promote our international visibility. So what I have to do is, uh, in the Human Rights Council, I able to uh, deliver a statement, about 300 statements in the Human Rights Council. And then the objective is, uh, even though we're still uh, struggling to develop uh, our national development, we're still struggling on uh, basic uh, infrastructure and then basic need of our people, like education, like health, improving everything. But during 20 years, we have done so lot. So lot. We, we have, you know, the government, the, the state, Timor Leste has done a lot. We have also some progress. Besides, don't see uh, other negatives, but we have uh, some something that is already positive. So that, uh, you know, uh, I bring all those uh, progress that we have made in terms of uh, uh, human rights. Uh, you know, uh, we are developing education, struggling in education, in health, in 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 uh, how to combat, uh, uh, how to, to promote the uh, woman right, child, child right. So all those uh, cluster, then uh, I'm really, really uh, active in the Human Rights Council. And then at the same time also we let, 
uh, and then uh, I was approached by the other ambassador, other mission, like uh, I, I could mention that Algeria and Western Sahara, and then also um, the South Africa, they approached me to uh, request me to, uh, uh, you know, to be a chair for the group that called Geneva Support Group for Western Sahara, Western Sahara case. So I led the, the group for two years, and then in the, in the group history, before I left, the, in the one farewell party, the, the ambassador of uh, Algeria and uh, South Africa, they say, you know, Mr. Fernandez, in the history, the only one that you are led, the only your, yourself, the only, uh, on, only you is led uh, the group for two, two terms, consecutively. Yeah. So, and then also, and then I also, together with ambassador, the, the head of mission of uh, Liberia, we co-chair. The, the group of uh, Z7 plus uh, act section group, WTO group. So, so we have done a lot, you know, during the COVID, I would like to also to share with you that during COVID, you know, I always uh, in touch with uh, Mr. Tedros, the current DZ of the, uh, of the WHO. And uh, yesterday I heard that he re-elected again for the second term. So I think with this, I would like to con congratulate to Dr. Tedros for your appointment because you have done uh, excellent work and then also become an uh, excellent partner with Timor-Leste because we are working with, uh, with him and with his team regarding the COVID, uh, regarding the vaccination, vaccination, um, uh, you know, uh, vaccine. Then, you know, uh, when the meeting that, uh, you know, um, I always, uh, I always uh, uh, make uh, his, uh, his office busy. So make sure to send Timor Leste vaccine, and they say no, 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 no. Australia is will, uh, will uh, hand over. Uh, Australia is the one who is in charge in the region. So, and then finally, when the the vaccine arrive in Timor Leste, in our country, I feel oh yes, we have what we have done, and we can see something concrete than how to protect our people from the, the pandemic, uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So, what's for the future? Um, What's happening with your life? Yeah, now I enjoy my life after uh, all, all the official, uh, you know, very hectic uh, work in Geneva. And, uh, not only, you know, participated the, call, I mean, the, the session in the Human Rights Council, but also session in the WHO session, in, and also I was handled also the accession process our membership to uh, to WTO. Now, before I left, is already we reached to the second working party meeting. So the document is uh, now, and then also we have a number of uh, market access uh, negotiation with our develop, uh, development partner bilaterally. So I think about 15 countries, include Australia, New Zealand, Indonesia, and then also China, Japan, Korea. So all of our partners, they are very helpful. They are very active, uh, especially for our partner, our development partner in the region. I mean, our friendly country in Asia Pacific, in ASEAN, and also Pacific, and, and also China, is, as well as uh, uh, Japan and Korea, they are very supported. Timor Leste to become uh, soon, soon or later, will become a full membership of a World Trade Organization. Currently, we are still as observer at the organization. For us, that if we are joining, you know, we have a, a lot of discussion in the country that oh, we have to, we have to, you know, access ourselves. What uh, in, in terms of the comparative advantage? What product, the main product we have? Currently, of course, we only have a petroleum. We only have a coffee. But by accession to be a member of uh, of WTO, it will give an, a lot of uh, opportunity that we can integrate it, our economy to a global economy. So that we can access the capital flow, we can access to investment, we can access of the uh, transfer of technology from all the, our uh, all the very important uh, country in the region. So that is, uh, you know, WTO is, uh, you know, uh, trade rule-based rule international trading system, rule-based. So that's very important. Then, um, I think uh, Timor Leste itself. We, if we talk as a Timor Leste, we have to look to ourselves. What is the comparative advantage we have? I think we have a lot of uh, product that uh, we need to, through our uh, 
a policy on a diversification of our economy that we have to see not only coffee in the terms of agriculture, we also have a fishery. You know, we abandon our fishery sector, our sea is <laughs> uh, not explored yet, uh, especially the, the seafood. I think Timor Leste also become a very potential for the seafood industry. And then also agribusiness, agro industry. We have a lot of things. I, I, one thing is, uh, you know, this is a personal opinion, my dream, one day, I want Timor Leste to have a big plantation. Yeah. Then we invite our other country to come and then working in Timor Leste. Like what we are now doing, that we're sending our young people to go and then uh, scheme working in Australia. But in the future, I want to develop uh, Timor Leste, that uh, 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 modernize our uh, agriculture sector, become, uh, you know, industrialized in this sector, so that, uh, you know, change from subsistence to industrialized. Meaning, you know, you not find only a few of, uh, you know, less than uh, one hectare. We have to think big, to have um, 10 hectares or, or 20 hectares, so that, um, uh, you know, the, uh, our agriculture is uh, market-based, uh, market-oriented. Uh, market, uh, then, I think, by then, it will increase increase, uh, uh, I mean, not increase, but the generating uh, employment, increase the income, and then also make the country more, more viable. And then we can also to, uh, uh, you know, to, to implement our strategic plan. So I think now is, is after 20 years, after, I think since 2011, the, our government that uh, launched a strategic development plan, now I think it's the time to assess. What is uh, what the what the, the 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 progress in capital development investment, infrastructure development, and then economic development, and at the same time also the 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 the, the professionalism, the productivity in the administration and public administration sector. It's, we have to so by when you join WTO, compete. It is competition, but fair, rule based. So we. A small economy, but we have to think big how to integrate our economy to the global economy as well as when we access to ASEAN. So that's uh, it's not only Ministry for Affairs, but this is all, include journalists, all the stakeholders of the country must prepare ourselves to compete. Thank you very much. You're welcome. The story of Mr. Francisco has given us a better insight of what it is like to be a Timorese diplomat. I hope you have enjoyed his stories as much as I have. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next episode of Diplomata. I'm Francis Suni. Bye for now.